Hello everyone, welcome back. And today I am going to discuss the topics reversible and irreversible processes, internal energy, and work. So let us start with reversible and irreversible processes. So in my previous video, I discussed some important thermodynamic processes like isothermal process, adiabatic, isochoric, isobaric processes. And all these processes can be carried out reversibly as well as irreversibly. So let us understand what is a reversible process. So I have taken a gas confined within a cylinder and this cylinder is also provided with a frictionless piston. So this cylinder is provided with a frictionless piston and on the piston I have also placed some sand particles, very fine sand particles. Okay, And in this system the pressure exerted by the gas on the piston which will be called as internal pressure and pressure exerted by the weight of the piston, sand and the atmospheric pressure are equal. This means that external pressure and the internal pressure both are equal and the system is in the state of equilibrium. Okay. Now what I do? I remove a sand particle from this place and when I do this the internal pressure of the gas will become slightly greater than the external pressure okay and the gas will expand slightly and in this case the driving force driving force mean to say the internal pressure of the gas and the opposing force opposing force is the external external pressure so in this case the driving force is slightly greater than the opposing force and the gas will expand slightly and after the expansion equilibrium will be restored immediately what does it mean it means that the gas will expand slightly and after expansion the piston will stop and the external pressure and internal pressure again will become equal. Okay, So the system will again in the state of equilibrium. And if I place that sand particle again, then the process will be reversed. Okay, And if I keep on removing these sand particles, then I can have a finite expansion of the gas. For example, I have removed the second particle, then the gas will expand again slightly. But in this step, in this step also, the equilibrium will be restored. Then I remove the third particle, then the gas will again expand. And after expansion, the equilibrium will be restored immediately. And in every step, the driving force will be slightly greater than the opposing force and every step of the process is exactly reversible by placing the sand particle again which I have removed. Okay, So now we can define what is a reversible process. A reversible process is a process in which all the changes occurring in the direct process all the changes occurring in the direct process can be reversed can be reversed and equilibrium exists every time during the process okay and further as i have explained that in this process the driving force which is internal pressure will be slightly greater than the external pressure which is opposing force and this such type of changes are called as infinitesimal changes infinitesimal change 
infinitesimal change mean to say that is very very small change or I can say that this process is carried out infinitesimally slowly very 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 slowly okay so this was a reversible process now what is an irreversible process a process which is not reversible or the process which does not meet the requirement of a a reversible process is a reversible process this means that the irreversible process will not be carried infinitesimally slowly okay and in this process the every step of the process cannot be exactly retraced or reversed this means if we want to reverse or retrace every step of a process then that process has to be carried out very 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 slowly that is infinitesimally slowly okay so this is this was irreversible process but the majority of the processes which occurs in nature they are irreversible as i have explained earlier that is flow of water down the down the hill or flow of heat from hotter body to a colder body these all processes are irreversible and spontaneous so all the naturally occurring processes are spontaneous and irreversible and as far as this reversible process is concerned strictly speaking this process is almost impossible because this process is carried out infinitesimally slowly and it would take infinite time for its completion so we cannot wait for such a long time but still this con concept of reversible process is very very important in chemical thermodynamics and we will study in in the coming topics also we will study reversible isothermal expansion of a of an ideal gas such type of topics we are going to discuss so these processes reversible processes cannot be um, immaterialized but still they are very very important so this was all about reversible and irreversible processes my next topic is internal energy what is internal energy i have told you that every substance or system is associated with certain definite amount of energy and that energy is called as internal energy of that system or the substance and this internal energy depends upon many factors like the arrangement of atoms within substance and how the electrons are arranged inside the atoms and further it also depends upon the conditions of pressure temperature and volume so internal energy depends upon many factors and internal energy is equal to the sum of different types of energy mean to say that a substance possesses different types of energy and internal energy is denoted by the symbol u or e so symbol for the internal energy is either u or e okay so as i said that internal energy of a system or and of or a substance is the sum of different types of energies internal energy is the sum of electronic energy nuclear energy plus vibrational kinetic energy plus translational kinetic energy plus rotational kinetic energy so this internal energy is a sum of different types of energies a substance can possess but many terms in this expression cannot be measured exactly for example vibrational translational and rotational kinetic energies cannot be measured okay this means that absolute value of the internal energy of a system or substance cannot be determined 
because when we cannot measure these quantities then how can we measure the absolute or the total value of internal energy of a substance okay and fortunately it is not required and let me explain that how it is not required let us consider a process or a system going from state a to state b okay then what is the energy change energy change is delta u it is equal to internal energy of b minus the internal energy of a okay and in thermodynamics we require only energy change not the absolute value of energies u b and u a now you might be thinking that how it is possible that we can measure delta u we can measure delta u without the knowledge of u b and u a okay this is very simple to understand what is delta u delta u or the change in internal energy is the energy evolved or absorbed during a chemical or physical process okay what i will do i will just carry out this process i will convert a into b and i will just measure the amount of energy released during the process or absorbed okay and that energy absorbed or evolved is what is delta u okay for the calculation of delta u we need not to have you know knowledge of internal energy of b and the absolute value of internal energy of a okay let us simplify further for example if energy of b is equal to 40 and energy of a is 30 kJ okay then how much energy has to be absorbed in order to carry out this process 10 if a will absorb 10 amount of energy then a will be converted into b because b is having energy 40 okay and this energy how much energy has to be absorbed 40 minus 30 that is ub minus ua okay but to calculate the energy absorbed i need not to have this uh, uh, value 40 and 30 i will just carry out the process and i will measure the energy absorbed which is equal to 10 and that is what delta u okay so i ho hope that you might have understood that in order to measure energy change we need not to have any idea of for internal energy of the reactants or the products and del value of delta u is positive for endothermic reactions and value of delta u is negative for exothermic reactions for example here the energy of the product is more than energy of reactant okay so heat will be absorbed and the value of delta u is positive that is energy is absorbed 40 minus 30 if i just reverse the value that is v is having energy 30 and a is having energy 40 then the heat will be released and how much heat will be released 10 and in this case energy of products is less than energy of reactant so for exothermic reaction delta u will be negative that is 30 minus 40 and for endothermic reaction delta u will be positive that is 40 minus 30 plus 10 so i hope that you have understood it and our next topic is work okay and we have studied in physics that work is said to be done when the point of application of the force is displaced in the direction of the force for example i have a point here okay and i have applied some force on this point and this point has displaced 
in the direction of force and let L is the displacement and F is the force then we know that work that is work is equal to force into displacement and this type of work is called as mechanical work what we know that we have different types of works okay so now I can say that is work done work is equal to a generalized force a generalized force which is called as capacity factor capacity factor into a generalized displacement generalized displacement displacement which is called as intensity factor okay now if we have electric work I told you that this type of work is mechanical work and if I have electric work then electric work then in electric work the generalized force is EMF that is electromotive force and what is generalized displacement or the displacement is quantity of electricity quantity of electricity this is electric work we know it we have studied in electrostatics in physics another type of work is gravitational work gravitational work and gravitational work is the work when we move an object or a body against gravity okay when we lift an object against gravity and in that case the force will be the weight of the body that is mg mg and what will be the displacement displacement will be the height up to which we have lifted the body so mg into h so in this case the gravitational work is equal to mg h okay so uh, I, have, I have told you that what is work what is electric work and what is gravitational work okay and uh, in my next video I am going to discuss very very important pressure volume work because it will take time and it's very important uh, type of work in chemical thermodynamics in majority of the processes we study pressure volume work okay so keep watching my videos and also subscribe my channel thank you very much